Welcome back, y'all. Today, we're going to be checking out a GBT submitted by one of my followers here on Twitter. I'm going to start a little new series here. So I'm going to try to do one technical video a day and one, you know, looking at a GBT created by y'all a day. And if I come over to Twitter here, I'm going to go ahead and just post the tweet. Or first, let's go ahead and see the one we're doing today. So this came from this t tweet thread here, uh, basically asking what GBT I should check out here. So I got you, Bodwin. We're going to check out your uh, Professor AJ gbt today and see how good it is if it's up to the par and then i'm gonna go ahead and post another tweet here go ahead follow me on twitter uh post your gbts that you think you've been using daily whether you've been creating it yourself or like you're actually getting a ton of value from it so i'm gonna go to post this and something went wrong so i'm gonna have to try this again but i'm gonna go ahead and post this and then let me know it's gonna be a daily series here we're gonna lead up to open ai's api open ai's app store launch and when it finally gets launched we'll have a good Good amount of videos done here. Also, I'm going to make sure to leave the chat GBT that we're going to use today in the description down below. All right, so I got the GBT loaded up here. Let's go ahead and see what the capabilities are. So we're going to say, so it seems like the purpose of this GBT is to help with entrepreneurship. You know, as you see here with the questions, we got like how to write a business plan, uh, market segmentation when it comes to entrepreneurship and stuff. What I usually like to do before I begin and, you know, start using a GBT is I'll ask, what are the capabilities of this GBT? And kind of get an overall overall arching idea of what it can do all right so it looks like we got eight main capabilities here the ones that are seem really cool to me is something to do with dali image generation i do note that they chose not to uh give us access to the internet so we're going to really base our answers off the knowledge base that was basically built into the gbt and then it seems like there's a more of uh, feedback user response and interactive learning activities so let's go ahead and start a new chat here. I'm going to use one of the, you know, starter questions and kind of see what we can get from here. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do this question of discuss the importance of innovation in startups and first kind of get an understanding of how it structures its outputs. Also, I want to point out while I was giving this generation, I think it's super cool that uh, this is obviously in the context that this came from a professor. So this is cool in the context that, you know, some people in the education space could create GBTs uh, about their class. And then therefore kind of give it as like, you know, during the syllabus week, hey, by the way, there's a GBT that's dedicated for this class as super cool as now we're able to basically if I'm doing a worksheet or I'm working in this class, I can access the GBT for help as well. You know, layering uh, the ways we learn when it comes to this context. Based on this output, though, it looks horrible. No, nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> so you can tell based off the output here, though, there was some prompt engineering incurring basically because it's a lot more structured than you would expect from just normal chat GBT conversation. Seems like we start with a definition, we get an explanation, and then we even get real life examples, which is nice. And we actually get references to the work that it got this from. So that's super cool here. And then interactive activity. So it, then it leads to an interact. Okay, this is cool. This is, this is why GBT is special. Uh, think of traditional industry, the problem or need your innovation addresses, how your ID differs. Okay, so let's go ahead and start playing around with this a little bit. All right, so if you're familiar with one of my other videos here, we did a video where I showed you how to make public and private GBTs. And one of the suggestions was making it, so when I sold a burger, there'd be a QR code for an AI, you know, showing how it was made. Let's go and throw it at it. So we're gonna say, okay, I have an idea for my burger stand. We want to put a QR code on the burger box. I think that's what it's called. Um, when a user scans it, we get a AR visualization of the, I know this is really random, uh, burger being made, but you wanna throw random stuff uh, because I'm actually curious on how to interpret this. So let's go ahead and put this in here and see what it will structure here. Okay, so it seems to think, you know, basically it's enhancing the customer experience. Um, while QR codes are commonly used for menu feedback, using them for an AR visualization a food preparation process unique and the technologies advance. All right, so this is really good. What I like about this is it structures its output as you see your potential challenges where basically it even gives potential roadblocks we can run to. So technical ex execution, the cost, user adoption and content updates. Um, your idea has potential to create a distinctive brand identity and could be powerful marketing tool. Next steps, developing the AR content, integrating it with the QR code and educating customers about this feature. Pretty standard stuff, pretty good. I'm gonna say, what is an example of a bad idea when it comes to starting a business? If 
I can do this. There we go. <laughs> okay, so this is pretty funny here. Um, so yeah, I gave a bad business idea being basically, let's say I send you a text message, but then the process is that it turns that into a physical letter and then sends the letter to be mailed to the recipient. So that definitely makes a lot of sense here. Um, also points it out basically number formatted uh, of why that is a bad idea. Okay, wow, this is actually pretty cool here. So now on top of that, it's actually uh, accessing its knowledge base here. As you see here from the, according to Clayton theory of disruptive innovation, successful businesses often start by adding unmet needs in the market. This idea, however, seems to create an unnecessary service and that does not enhance the simp simplify any existing processes. That's always a good idea. That's any rule of thumb in business. Basically, if you can achieve it faster, cheaper, and more effectively than whatever the standard market is, you'll probably have a good idea there. Me sending a text message and then getting that into a physical piece of mail that's then sent, I mean, there might be a gimmicky idea behind that. It could be funny in some context, but I definitely don't see that scaling. All right, so I'm gonna try one last thing here. I'm gonna say, okay, based, I'm not gonna yell at it, okay, based on my, the knowledge base you have, give me two really good ideas Let's see what it does here now one thing i like about this which i think is pretty interesting and i hadn't really thought of it before was they purposely had turned off web browsing as they wanted to make sure that this gbt was very specific on the type of um, you know education and value it provided as it wanted to base it off of the knowledge base. So keep that in mind if you're developing GBTs and you find yourself getting answers that are outside the scope of what you originally intended, it might be a good idea to turn off web browsing unless that is a fundamental feature within your uh, application. So we got one for sustainable packaging solutions for e-commerce, and then we got a health and wellness app integrated with AI for personalized, guide, personalized guidance. That's pretty powerful there. Um, if you're familiar with a new technology that kind of came out was AI pin, um, I got some opinions on it, but one of the things it could do what I thought was pretty cool was it can basically uh, be aligned with your personal health goals. And since it has like the camera, it can kind of see what you're eating and it can kind of identify how much calories or protein you've intaked up to that day. Um, knowing that though, this is pretty cool. This is pretty powerful in the context of maybe speaking to GBT in proctoring ideas. But I think the overarching thing that just occurred here beyond that is the context of being able to add GBTs in uh, in an educational context, right? So as you can see from the name, Professor AJ, you could use this in a classroom setting and be a part of the syllabus now, where a lot of times in the classroom setting, if you needed uh, help with a question, you may need to go to office hours, you may need to send an email, but what if you made a GBT that was trained on a syllabus so it knew all of the stuff like the email, deadlines, due dates, stuff like this. This seems like a really powerful tool in the context of just classrooms. So without further ado, make sure to leave a like if you felt you learned value. Go ahead and jump over to my Twitter here um, and I'm gonna go ahead and be posting a tweet every day basically asking for you know GBTs I should check out and we can start checking them out together. I was about to end the video there, but I forgot to do my classic outro, okay? Without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.